And what I discovered, what I think I discovered, what I hope that I prove uh, in my first book is that the core myth of origins of Christian Rus. So if you're in Moscow and you stop, or you're in Kiev or you're in Minsk and you stop somebody on the street today and you say, hey, where did Russia come from? Or where did Ukraine come from? They're probably going to tell you the stories that are written down between 955 and 1015 in the Rus primary chronicle. Okay. So they're going to tell you about the baptism of Olga in Constantinople. And they're going to tell you about the, the mass baptism of, of the Rus in the, in the Nineper river in 988. And maybe they'll tell you about the martyrdom of princes Boris and Gleb, right? So this is where Atkudi Yest Pashla Zimaya Ruskaya, right, is the very famous opening line of the Chronicle suggests. And what I show in the book in this just extraordinarily um, series of close readings is that, well, actually, this native mythology derived from the liturgical services of the Byzantine Empire. So very briefly, very broadly, I showed that the story of the baptism of, of Princess Olga in Constantinople in 955 is actually based on the service for baptizing pagans in the great church of Hagia Sophia in Constantinople. Okay, I showed that her textual figure in the chronicle is also based on a series of feasts that have to do with holy four mothers and four runners and, and the Theotokos, the mother of God. Okay. So in my book, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not treating what really happened. Does that make sense? Like I'm not, I'm not, I'm not trying to tell my readers what I think really happened in real life. I am deconstructing these historical textual representations and showing that certain parts of them are very densely comprised of liturgical of materials from liturgical hymns, liturgical readings, liturgical prayers. Um, so, for instance, it, I, it, in my opinion, it would be better to say that Princess Olga is is not so much a textual or historical figure as she is a liturgical one. She 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 is the she is the mother of Christian Rus in the same way that Joachim and Anna uh, are the mother of Mary, in the same way that Mary and Joseph are ultimately the mother of Christ, right? There's this whole tradition, this whole liturgical mythology uh, surrounding how holy people, the chosen of God, are born into the world. And basically what happened in Kiev in the early 12th century is that the the, the native chroniclers, the Kievan chroniclers, took these liturgical paradigms, which they had internalized from, from thousands of hours of liturgical worship, and they crafted a whole story about the beginning of their land that conformed, um, that conformed it to the myth of Christian origins that, about the Byzantine Empire that they knew from the religious services. So in other words, the, his, the sacred history they sang at church, they quote unquote, rusified and turned in to a modified uh, myth of sacred origins for their own people. So for instance, in 988, when Prince Vladimir baptizes the, the, the Kievans in the, in, the, in the river, I show that he's actually being depicted as the first bishop of Rus, and he's standing in the river and he's saying the prayers that only a bishop could pray during the baptismal rites. I show that in 996, when he enters the Church of the Tithes and consecrates it, he again says the prayers that only a bishop can pray. So one of the most provocative arguments I make about Vladimir is that he's actually depicted as the first bishop of Rus, which is entirely non-canonical. It didn't happen like that. But chroniclers writing 150 years later, they had to invent a story. You know, scholars generally agree, oh, what happened? By then, nobody remembered what had happened. Nobody had written it down. We don't know. You know, I think Shakmatov said they had to build an edifice upon the sand. Um, and the story they ended up um, creating or editing together was actually based on the story of St. Constantine the Great from the liturgical services. So the whole figure of St. Vladimir the Great that we find in the Chronicle from 
even his pagan past to his death in 1015, all of it has been redacted together, I argue in the book, in order to make Vladimir look like the new Constantine of Rus. So what I, how I do that is I, I, in great detail, reconstruct the stories that the liturgical services told about St. Constantine and his mother, St. Helena. Mm-hmm.